My name is Kendriana Washington. I was born in Oklahoma. My mother had me when she was young. She was really active in the church when she was young as well. So Christianity was always a really big part of our lives. Yes, I know my father. Um, he helped raise me uh, for, basically he was active in raising me for the first three years of my life. Um, and we lived in, when we lived in Oklahoma, and around the time that I was three years old, my mother moved to Dallas um, for better opportunities. And I've been living here since I was around three years old. So basically most of my life. I'm 21 now and I'm a student at the University of Texas at Dallas. I was really young. I don't remember much from Oklahoma. I was born in a small town. Um, we lived in Tulsa, but I was born in Okmulgee. I was kind of a surprise all the way, all the way around. I, the name of the town is Okmulgee. 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 Uh, the population is very low. It's still very low. Um, I think it's decreasing as time goes on. It's definitely a farm t town. I've only been there a few times in my life. Um, I went there to visit my great grandmother. Uh, she lived there until she passed. Um, so since then, it hasn't been the main meeting place for my family. Um, but um, when we moved to Dallas, I was I went to school here. I've basically always gone to school school here, and Christianity was a really big part of our lives. Um, since my mom was a single parent, she worked really hard and she sought refuge in the church. Um, so we were always there, sometimes multiple, multiple times per week. And that's where I met all of my friends at that time. And um, when I was young, my relationship with Christianity was primarily emotional. Um, I liked to go there. I liked the way it felt. It's where all of my social activities were. Well, my mother... When I was young, my mother was actually, um, she worked for FedEx and that's hard work. It's long hours. But when we weren't there, our friends were basically in the church. So we were in the church on Wednesdays. We were there on Sundays. We were there on Tuesdays. Um, any, if she wasn't working, we were basically there because um, we had a sort of small Southern Baptist background. So um, the church was kind of like our family. In the church, when I was young, you know, I went to Sunday school and I attended Sunday services. My mom loved to sing, so she was always in the choir. Um, there were different, the church had different um, activities that we could do um, throughout the summer and throughout the year. And um, as I said earlier, my, it was mainly emotional. There were no theological studies. Um, and I think that as, as a Christian, um, it was all about connecting. It was all about feeling God and being with God and having a personal relationship with God um, in respect to the Trinity. Well, the structure, the structure is kind of similar to what happens in the masjid. Uh, we meet on Mondays instead of meeting on Fridays. Um, there's praise and worship, um, which is basically uh, in, in um, non-denominational and Protestant um, churches. And I was a Protestant Christian, and later I didn't have any denomination. So in some groups of Christianity, there is no singing or music, um, but there was music. That's sort of how it starts out. And then there's a lecture or a sermon. And after that, there's a call to the altar where people can come up and accept Christianity if they like, if they're not Christian, or they can sort of renew their faith. Um, on Wednesdays, there's sort of a midweek service where everyone comes into the church and there's a short lecture and a short worship period. Um, and then we go home and all other days of the week um, would be when organizations would meet. So there may be a Bible study with women or a Bible study for children, um, something like that. And they basically choose a verse from the Bible and everyone's able to study and analyze it. But um, the huge difference, I believe, in Bible study in the church and Bible study in Islam and at the masjid is that um, in the masjid, it's basically theological. You know, you study the background, you apply it to your life, you talk about the hadith and um, what, um, 
what's written in the Quran and what maybe the different opinions are and what we should do in our lives where Bible study in the church for me and for my observations, it was mainly praying. Um, we did study the verse and sort of, it was mainly about tugging at your heart and getting an understanding from your heart, um, not necessarily from an object, objective view. So that's why I think in Christianity, Christians are more, um, they like to feel, um, whereas Muslims, they want to understand a little bit more and um, get the background and think more objectively. Um, when, I was, when I was young, uh, for most of my life, I was a single child. Um, I spent a lot of time alone, so I definitely had time to kind of let my imagination um, come out. And I, I read lots of books. And um, around the time that I was eight years old, my mother married and the dynamic changed dramatically. I went from being a single child to having four siblings, four other siblings. And um, I had always talked to my mom and I always told her that, you know, I would like a brother and sister. I would like to have someone to play with. And then, you know, I got four all at once and I sort of wanted to send them back. I didn't want them anymore. Um, but I mean, I think it was a good experience. Um, in a mixed family, there are definitely some challenges. Um, at that time, I had four siblings and um, my mother and my stepfather had two children on their own, so I had six siblings. And now that my biological family um, is married, I have nine total. So I have nine brothers and sisters, um, which is a pretty big number. And um, it makes for an interesting dynamic um, as a whole. There's definitely a lot going on. Um, actually, I'm not completely sure um, what groups probably wouldn't have um, any music. I know that some don't. Uh, the structure is different in different church, in different, um, there's the, in Christianity, there's um, Catholic groups, and then there are Protestant groups. Um, and I was Protestant. I wasn't really raised in the Catholic church. And the Catholic church is much different than um, the Protestant church. Um, in the Protestant church, in most Protestant churches, there is a portion where there's music and there's singing. And that could be from, it could range from a, like a full multi-piece band to a choir alone. It really just depends on um, what that particular group is. Uh, I started out in a Baptist church, so that's really active. Um, I think especially in African-American churches, predominantly African-American churches, um, which is what I was raised in when I was a child. Um, music and singing in the choir is a really big thing. And I think it always has been a big thing for the um, black community. Um, historically, in um, the beginning when my ancestors were first brought to this country, they, they sought refuge in religion. Of course, some of them were Muslim, um, most of them weren't, and all of them had to ad adopt, adopt Christianity and become Christian. It was sort of forced on them, um, but it's kind of the way they organized and they came together because they were working from when sunrise to sunset. And um, then they would come together and they would have their own churches and they would sing these songs that tell their story. There are these spirituals that um, talk about how I'm a slave now, but when I die and I go to see Jesus because they're Christian, I'll finally be free. And a lot of these songs are still in churches today. It, it definitely expresses, it shows what they were going through, you know. And um, something, I think for the black community, the dynamic really changed during the civil rights era um, because this whole time it, it had been all about the church and being involved in the church. And although things are tough, here in America, and although we face discrimination and racism, um, some very disgusting racism, when we die, we'll finally be free and we'll finally be equal. Equal. But during the um, civil rights era, the nation of Islam, it it started to grow, and um, you know, leaders like Malcolm X, they were teaching something totally different. They were saying, "No, you deserve equality." 
in this world. You deserve equality in this country. If you can't get a job, then you start your own business. You start a black owned business. If you can't get an education, then you, you go to the library and you read books. I mean, Malcolm X was, he was mostly self-taught. Um, especially later in his life. And, and he was so knowledgeable. And um, uh, things started to change in the black community and um, unity was formed and Islam sort of started to make an internal transformation for people, no matter what walk of life they were from. I mean, during that time, we look at the media and it shows what things were like um, during the civil rights era, era for the different groups. In the black community, it was a time for them to grow and for them to, and for us to sort of um, change, change our place in the country and, and, and take back our rights. Whereas you see some of the media in sort of the upper class or white communities, you see it, it was all about music and dancing and American bandstand. It was totally different. Whereas in the black communities, there was something happen happening. There was this uprising going on. Um, it was, it was, I just think that the differences are sort of great. You know, you see that, you know, people think that this time was, oh, it was such a great time for music and fashion. No, there was something going on in the black communities. There was something great happening. And um, it's a lot of the things that happened at that time um, sort of changed the way the black community saw themselves. And more and more, I believe more and more people started going to college, um, seeking a greater education. Um, and it led to a lot of the civil rights that we have today.